chain plates. Chain plates. Chain plates. They're important because they help hold up the mast and you definitely can't see the part that's going to cause you trouble. So it's a good idea when you're refitting a, an old boat, pull them out and uh, clean them off and look at them, see if there's corrosion or cracks or... It's easy, you don't really need many tools. You want to make sure the, the mast is supported so you know, I would only recommend doing one chain plate at a time, and that way the rest of your standing rigging is going to be holding up the mast. Take one of the halyards and just try to transfer, you know, some load to the halyard. Probably going to be easiest for me to hook it up to this turnbuckle. We'll go tighten this up with a winch just to get some tension on it. All right, so we've got the uh, main halyard approximately taking the load of the shroud. What we do now is we've got to remove these uh, these two cotter pins and that will allow us to spin the, the turnbuckle to loosen it. And you know, all you really need is a set of pliers. Bend the ears back and it pulls right out. Unless they look really bad, I reuse them. Some people will say, uh, you know, replace them every time, but people will, will put tape all around these things. That's the reason for that is just to like avoid chafe when you're, you know, when you're tacking your, your head sail. Sarah, check that out. Check out <laughs> yeah, that. I already get, did. Get in there and check out that bunny rabbit. But anyway, I don't think it's a good idea to tape, tape all these things up, you know, it sort of holds water and dirt in there and everything, but you know, out of sight, out of mind. See if I can get this one out. Give it a little twist, and it's out. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little lubricant. Those shorts, I don't think are very appropriate. I just poured a little bit of mineral spirits in here, and it's real fine, so it, you know, it seeps down into the threads. You hold on to the standing rigging before you start twisting the turnbuckle, because you, you don't want to keep winding this around. Just make sure you're spinning it the right way. All right, so we're, we're nice and loose here. And now I can take this last cotter pin out. This is also a critical piece, you know. Let, you know, it's also good to look at these turnbuckles. I gotta do one last thing up here. For that, I need a uh, screwdriver, so I'll be right back. All right. And you can see it's, you know, I have to work to get this cover plate off. I haven't noticed any significant leaks. These chain plates go into full pockets of fiberglass, so you can't really see them. An aluminum cover plate and, uh, you know, the this, this ceiling you know, shot and the, the aluminum's corroded quite a bit. See all that white chalky stuff that's corroded aluminum. But we'll clean this all up and reuse it. We'll get this out of the boat. And for that, we gotta go down, down below and uh, there'll be three bolts that we'll have to take out in order to pull this up. I'm gonna take this all the way out. All right, so we've got the lower part off. But let me show you this toggle. You know, there's a, there's like some lines in here that look like, especially this one right here. So we got some cleaning to do, but let's go get that chain plate up. Here's our chain plate pocket. It's got three bolts. They're three eighths inch stainless steel. There's trouble coming through, so. Tap. You know, if you're gonna tap a a bolt out, uh, it's good practice just to leave the nut on a little bit, so you don't uh, put an indentation in your first thread. All right, thank you. Let's see if I can get this out here. So I'm just using the vice grips to to twist it, and then I use the the wrench just to pry it out. On to the next one. 
Next one should be pretty easy, although there's a lot of paint. There's no reason to like paint the bolts. Middle one slid right out. Uh, the next one, you're wondering where the next bolt is, but it's, there it is, right below the shelf. So, this is gonna be a pain in the butt. I'm gonna struggle with this, but we'll get it out. How's it going? Almost there. Alright. Okay, got it. Got our three nuts. So we'll get these cleaned up, and we'll also get the chain plate. So now we got the three bolts out, and now we just gotta pry this up. And you know, you can try to just pull it, but it budges, but it's good to be able to pry it. So I just have a couple blocks of wood here. You can see it's, uh, you know, it's got definitely some corrosion. Professional riggers would look at this, I would imagine, I've never asked one, but they'd probably look at this and be like, absolutely not, no way, just replace it. That's the conservative, safest path forward. I'd like to put this in a, you know, a machine and, and test it, you know, test it to failure and, and see, you know, see what its strength is. We'll clean it up. I'm still optimistic that once we sand this thing down, take a look at it. You know, we're not gonna really lose much of the, the original section. This is 5 16 and an inch and three quarters wide. You know, a little over, maybe it's around, around half, a, half a square inch. The yield strength for this is, is probably like 60 or 80,000 pounds per square inch. There's no way on earth that you should ever get that sort of load. We'll go clean this up and take a look. Take a look. So here's our chain plate, and we'll just knock some of this rust off and see what it looks like. sanding with a grinder and um, yeah it cleans up pretty good but you know I got rid of 95% of the, the pits there's a couple couple little marks still in here I'm gonna hit it a little bit more with a little sander just to smooth it up I'll do it with two different grits and then we'll measure it we'll see what kind of section we have left we'll use a micrometer to do that It's not too bad. I'm not gonna lose sleep over using this for a season of sailing and you know, fairly calm weather. And what I'll do is I'll plan to replace these with silicone bronze because it has better corrosion resistance. I think with the stainless steel, you, I think it performs better when it's, it's like remarkably smooth. This might be a little bit more susceptible to surface corrosion. You know, leaving this in for the long term, you know, it's probably not a good idea without polishing it. We'll make new ones out of browns one day. It's really just surface corrosion. I think it's got a couple of years. What you'd really be worried about is if you saw a crack like going this way, you know, where where one of these would break open. Think about right with regard to the chain plate. So, you know, all the all the load is being transferred 
for the whole stay through these these two small areas you know and, and the chain plate you know we're we're transferring all the load basically through um, you know the, these two rectangles and cross section right here and here you know would be the weakest part um, you know these holes are smaller so you know and obviously when the load passes through the the body of the plate it, there's there's plenty so um, you know you've got you sort of think about where your weakest link is you know the weakest link of the chain right um, you know, and so probably the that this might be it um, or the wire the wire might be the the weakest part so um, you know if there's a little bit of corrosion right here and you know you sand it out or grind it out and um, you know you realize you don't have any cracks or anything like that then uh, you know I I personally would feel comfortable using it but you know it's everyone's got to make that choice for themselves um, you know how much risk you're willing to, to take or you know how much risk you even perceive Clean it a little bit with mineral spirits. Now we got the chain plate in. Yeah, washer on. That one in. That one's in. That one's sort of a pain in the butt. Your own and a nut. You should spin right on. Washer. I think they just need to be like fairly snug. Being tighter doesn't help them hold it. You know, they're just transferring the load through shear. Maybe if they were really loose, they'd, the nut could could eventually wind its way out. You know, to do this right, really, you'd want to. While this plate was out, you could go in. What people do is they'll they'll bend a uh, head of a nail or screw. Um, nail would work really good. Put that in a drill, cordless drill, and then clean out all of the core that's right up against this plate and then mask it from the bottom and fill it with epoxy. By doing that you you take the the material away that could rot the you know the epoxy will stand up to any water leaking down because um, eventually you know we're gonna we're gonna put a some sealer around this and um, eventually that sealer is gonna fail and, moisture will get back down like it has been. Yeah, this is important. You have to take a look at this, make sure you don't see any cracks. I think it's just surface corrosion, but these pins are good to check too.
throwing the stuff overboard, but I pick it up later. Okay. Tensioning it. This can be sort of an art or science. There are devices that you can clamp onto the stay and it will I guess give you some sort of indication of how uh, much tension is in it. The first time I, I rigged a boat with a, he's a former Olympic uh, sailor from Russia that was the rigger and um, he just did it by feel. You know, he sort of tightened it up a little bit and then he, the boat was a little, the beam was a little narrower, but he would just kind of sort of uh, feel it by hand. Um, so I kind of do that. And um, I also look at the mast uh, to try to get the mast uh, straight. It looks pretty good. And it feels pretty good too. have the two little cutter pins to put back. That probably took us, I don't know, an hour and a half. We had some difficulty with just, uh, you know, the configuration of this boat and the access to the, the chain plate. It's pretty simple, right? So uh, here's what I would hope that some of you take away from this. It's one, uh, very easy and um, doesn't require many tools to check your chain plates. You certainly can do this yourself. You don't have to pay someone to do it. Do the rest of them. Do this, uh, you know, when you're when you're restoring an old boat. If they still have life in them, I'd like to use it. And and I think there's enough redundancy in the whole system. Keep tabs and, uh, on this equipment and check it. I'm sure there there are plenty of cases out there that you know a mast has gone down and someone's been seriously injured. So uh, this is an easy way to help prevent something like that. And uh, I want to wish you luck in, in your boat project. And thanks for watching.